This video will explore the eTools Kit and the backgrounds features found in the McGraw-Hill ConnectEd online app. First thing we need to do is we need to be able to access our Everyday Math ConnectEd online program. So the first thing we need to do is head to the Washington Township Public Schools page, and underneath that Staff tab, we will find Class Link Access. When you click on Class Link Access, your Class Link will load in. Sometimes it does require you to uh, log in with your school email and password. So once I am into Class Link, I want to find the McGraw Hill Education app. And by clicking on that, it will get me into my Everyday Math Connect Ed Online Teacher's Edition program. So when I click on my teacher edition for whichever grade level I am working in, you'll notice that it takes me to the main page where I have access to all of the different lessons that I teach along with many other components. Today, the component we are going to focus on is found in this menu tab in the upper left hand corner. When I click on that, you're going to notice there are many different choices and components that really enrich the Everyday Math program. Today, I'm going to focus on something called the eToolkit. The eToolkit provides virtual manipulatives for both the student and the teacher. So I'm going to click on that. Now a brand new screen is going to open up. It doesn't look very impressive when we start, but notice in the right hand corner there are many little tabs. This first tab allows me to go ahead and write on this whiteboard that appears. The students also have access to this and can write on their um, eTool whiteboard. When I want to clean that whiteboard off in the lower right hand corner there are some circular arrows. Are you sure you want to clear it? I sure am. But I also can go ahead and do some typing. So if I select the T for the actual typing, enter in my little text box, I can go ahead and type in math problems, type in some thoughts or explanations. And again, to get rid of that, I hit those circular arrows to clear my online virtual whiteboard. Pretty cool. If I need a calculator, I have it right here. So I no longer need to pass out calculators to students in class. Everything is going to be found right within their ConnectEd account. So in the lower left hand corner, you're going to notice we have something called eTools and Backgrounds. So both are very good, but the difference is that eTools you can actually manipulate. That's why they're eTools manipulatives. The backgrounds cannot be manipulated. You can only draw on them. I'll show you what I mean. So you'll notice we have base 10 grids and clocks and fact practice, so many different templates. But if I wanted to add a clock template, notice that the only thing that I am getting is just a clock, similar to a clock you would find on a worksheet. Now I can go ahead and take my writing tools and I can certainly go ahead and show to a clock by drawing on it. So this again, think of it as a whiteboard, only the template is now on that whiteboard. Many of our teachers use sheet protectors and inside the sheet protector they'll put a, a math template. This is very similar to that. Now if I want to clear this off, this time I have to hit the X. The X in the lower right hand corner, are you sure you want to clear the background? I sure am. And then do I want to get rid of the writing? I hit those circular arrows. So there are many different types of backgrounds. Think of if you're teaching and you wanted to draw something on a board or you're using your document camera to project on your whiteboard. Well, these templates will actually put it up there for you. So it is almost replacing your whiteboard and your document camera that you would have and use in class. Another good example are frames and arrows. How many times do we spend drawing all the frames and the arrows right on our whiteboard for our students? Wasted time. So now I can just come right to my backgrounds, find my frames and arrows and add it in and then we can go ahead and focus on the math 
and not the drawing. This is also true for diagrams that the students use, um, such as our start, change, and you have all of that stuff. So I really encourage you to go ahead and explore the backgrounds found in the eTool kit. Another really wonderful component that both the students and the teachers have are the eTool kits. Now these eTool kits are more like manipulatives that the students can actually use to uh, create and explore. So think of all of those math tools you give out in class. Well now, they are here right in Connect Ed. So let's start with our counters. I know our kindergartners and our first graders practice counting. So now students can go ahead and drag some of their little teddy bear counters here. Show me 15 counters. Students can go ahead, add into, the, in, into all those counters that they need, and then you can even teach them to try and organize the counters into a straight row to make it easier to count. If students had to go and count those counters, they can go ahead and use the text or the writing feature to cross it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, and et cetera, et cetera. So the counters are a really great e-tool feature that are found in here. As I continue to explore, we also have counting sticks. Now, I will say that this gets a little tricky here, but if you notice at the bottom, in order for me to use my manipulative, I have to take it onto my workspace. So I like to put it in large font. It makes it very easy to see. And then I go ahead and add in my sticks, my counting sticks. Notice that it created five looking like a tally mark. Notice that I can also undo that. So now I can count individual or I can go ahead and start to combine them. Three, four, and boys and girls watch what happens when I add the fifth counting stick. Oh, it made a gate. So these are great for teaching tally marks right here in the eTools of Connect Ed. All right, as I continue to look at through some of these e-toolkits that you might use in all of our everyday math lessons, the warm-up involves the quick look cards. So my quick look cards are broken up into K2 deck or a grade three deck because the grade three deck focuses more on the arrays and the multiplication. But let's say I want my, uh, my quick cards deck. So notice down here are my deck. I have to be able to drag it. But you're also going to notice that I can sort if I wanted my five frame cards, my 10 frame cards, my dot pattern cards. There's tons of different choices that you have. Okay, um, I'm going to show you one that's popular in first grade, and that's our 10 frames. So if my 10 frames are selected, notice that my deck of cards comes up. Now I can choose how long I want those cards to be seen. Maybe I want three seconds, two seconds, one second if they're really good at it. I'm gonna set it at three seconds and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit go. So right now, how many dots did you see? Zero. I hit go. How many dots do you see? One. Now I can shuffle so that they're not in order. Now they're all going to be mixed up. How many dots do you see? Now notice also that I can go ahead and go back to that card and flip it around because now we can look at our strategies. Well, I know three plus three is six. One more gives us seven. So in your everyday math teacher's manual, it'll also tell you that you only need certain quick look cards. Maybe you need quick look card, no, 91 and 83. With custom order, I can go ahead and add in those numbers. And then the quick look card deck will only show those numbered cards that I enter in. A really great feature that helps to bring the learning into a more virtual friendly environment. 
Remember that when I want to clear it, I'm going to hit those double arrows there, those circular arrows, and head back to my E-Tools. Now your E-Tools are going to really depend on what your skill is going to be, but notice that I also have some base 10 blocks. I love using this. Boys and girls, especially my second graders. How much do I have? Show me 112 in base 10 blocks. So that is an awesome feature that makes it easy for the students to go ahead and do on their computer and perhaps easy for you to check as a classroom teacher. So I encourage you to explore these e-tools and there are tons and tons of them. For our second grade friends that teach money, here are all of your coins. How much money do I have? All right, I've seen teachers try and draw coins on the board, write 25 cents in circles. Now you can go ahead and actually go and put those coins right there for students to see, or students can also use this to go ahead and demonstrate mastery. All right, another really cool e-tool tool that I have discovered is our number grid. Let me see, oh, here it is. So our number grid, once I drag it in, you'll notice that it doesn't look really that impressive. It's a blank number grid. However, I can do some counting on my number grid. Notice that when I click on the skip count, I can tell my number grid to start at zero or start at one and count by Fives. I'm going to start at zero, count by fives, and you can end at 100. Boys and girls, go ahead and see if you can use your drawing tool to circle where all of our multiples of fives are. So our friends could be circling it. However, if I wanted to do it, I can hit start and notice that it will actually circle all of my multiples of five for me. The students like to race the computer to see if they can count as fast as the virtual number grid. Uh, needless to say, they never win. And then when I want to clear it, I would just go ahead and clear. It asks me if I'm sure, and then I can go ahead and do another. So I would start at zero. Maybe this time I want to count by nine because now I'm teaching third grade. And what happens when we count by nines? Why does it form a diagonal that goes from right to left? Again, great discussion for students to discover the multiples and all of our beautiful number patterns that we have. Remember that if I want to get rid of this, I hit those circular arrows, which will clear my screen and allow me to start over. All right, when I go ahead back to the eTool kit, again, you're just going to want to explore all of these wonderful, wonderful programs that you have for every possible content. You can create line plots, you can use the online geo board, even fraction circles, which are huge in our third, fourth, and fifth grade programs. Check this out. I can go ahead put in my fraction circle, and even split them up. Boy, how many yellow pieces will cover one red piece? And there we go. So rather than giving out all of those fraction circles and being worried about uh, safety and health-related issues, we now can use the eToolkit in Connect Ed to really make our learning more meaningful and safe for both teachers and students. So I encourage you to log into Connect Ed and explore all the many toolkits. Now, one thing that I do want to say is if you notice that I am in the grade tool, two toolkit, every grade level has access to the same tools. So whether you're teaching in first grade or fifth grade, you have all of these many different tools that really are shared throughout the skills that we teach here in mathematics. 
All right, my uh, fellow colleagues and students, this is the eToolkit found in ConnectEd. I encourage you to explore it and use it while you teach math this school year.